Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. So today I'm going to be painting Lantern Lit Spider and I'm going to be sipping on my coffee. And if you enjoy this process, I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you're going to find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for my materials today, I'm gonna to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm gonna be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, burnt umber, which I will call brown, Mars black, deep yellow, and cobalt blue. And of course, you can switch up those colors if you'd like, but that's what I'll be using. For my tools today, I have a nine and a half inch plate that I'll be using to create a beautiful circle for my moon. I have a white piece of chalk for some drawing and then I have two brushes. I have a half inch wide flat bristle brush and a number one round synthetic brush and I will refer to these as small and large as we go through the painting process and of course you can switch those up as well. If you're painting along with me you'll probably want to have a cup of water for washing your brushes as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, I will be providing you with a couple of additional resources that can help you through your painting process. One of them is a link where you can purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the large canvas to the fancy paper plate and the chalk and the paper towel and all the other good stuff, same paint, same brushes, all that good stuff. So that's down there for you. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're going to need today. All right, so what we're going to be doing for the first step is we're going to be painting our background black. So I'm going to be using my paper plate, my large brush, and black paint to do this. You could certainly draw an outline. We're going to be kind of sectioning off our moon um, and we're going to paint the rest around it black. But you could certainly take this in with your pencil. You could draw a circle, but I'm going to kind of skip that step <laughs> and make my paper plate dirty and paint around it. So where I'm going to place my, my plate is I'm about three inches away from the top of my canvas and I'm about four inches from the right hand side. So that's almost a quarter away. A quarter away would be about five inches. So I'm a little bit shy of that and a little bit shy of quarter way down. Quarter way would be about four inches and I'm a little bit higher than that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hold my paper plate like this. I'm going to put black paint on my brush and I'm going to paint around the edges. So this way, even if it bleeds in a little bit into where the um, moon is going to go, I'm totally okay with that. This is just a down and dirty quick way to get myself a pretty symmetrical circle without having to do an extra step. And then once I've got that, I just remove this. I've got a pretty darn good circle. You can get rid of this wherever you'd like to. And then you're just going to take the black paint and you're going to finish painting the entire background or sky of your of your landscape or whatever you'd like to call this a skyscape is there such a thing as a skyscape skyscape i don't know a atmospheric type of painting <laughs> so i'm going to be just there's no special brush stroke you can go left to right you can go in circles whatever works for you black is a great um covering color of paint so by the time you get done, it's going to cover up pretty well. And provided you don't have any um, really thick spots, which would be which would give you lumps and bumps. But if you had a nice kind of smooth, um, even coat to it, once it dries, you most likely will not see your paint stroke directions. So that's something that is the benefit to using a black 
paint because it does cover really well and sometimes you'll see me just kind of going vertical and then horizontal just to make sure that I have a nice even coat throughout the whole thing but I'm going right up to my edges and you can even paint the sides of your canvases along the edges the exterior edges of your canvas that makes for a nice professionally finished looking painting so it and black is a great color to do that border with. So if you wanna go ahead and wrap that paint color right around the edges, that'd be great. And then once you've got this entire thing covered in the um, sky, we will be utilizing the same brush for the next step, but you'll wanna wash it and dry it. So just get your whole background on here. I'm going right up to my original line that I created, and then you can just wash and dry this big brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna be doing for the next step is we're gonna paint ourselves a moon. I'm gonna use my large bristle brush. I'm gonna be using black, white, and brown. And how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna give it a pretty gray exterior edge to it. I'll have it a little bit darker on this bottom right so it gives it a little bit of dimension. And then I'm gonna be painting the interior with a circular type of motion with these three colors, which will provide it with a little bit of a kind of an out of focus crater kind of look because our spider is gonna be the in focus thing. So our moon is gonna be a little bit out of focus. I'll probably have some soft edges around um, the exterior to provide that little bit of an out of focus type of look. And my brightest area is gonna be up and through here, but I don't want it too, too bright because I want it the spider to kind of be the focal point. So I'm gonna have it a little bit on the dull side. So I'm gonna start with about equal parts of white and black on my brush at the same time. I'm gonna start down here in the bottom right corner, down in through here, just kind of going right up to the edge of my, um, of where the black meets. And if you don't get it perfect and you end up going outside the lines a little bit, it's okay. I'm gonna provide you with a, a quick step to, uh, or a process to kind of soften these edges in a minute. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick up a little bit of black, white, and a touch of brown also. So this will give it a little bit of a, of a more natural kind of look as opposed to just a cool gray, which sometimes when you use just black and white on your brush, that'll give you a cooler type of gray, which I'm okay with, but I, I like to add a little bit of warmth and a little bit of brown into my grays, just kind of a personal preference on my part. So I'm really just kind of going along the edges so I can get a pretty smooth appearance around the edges like this. And then what I'm gonna do is if I can get this little piece into here, there we go. Oh, I have a, a missing part down in through here. And your edges, again, don't have to be perfect because I'm gonna provide you with a little bit of a way to, to make it a little out of focus, but I wanna get the color on first. So once I get those edges done, I'm gonna start utilizing this circular type of brush stroke. So that way I don't just have a, a round rim or a line around the edges. I wanna provide it with kind of um, a textural type of dimension to it. And if you go outside like I did, don't worry about it. <laughs> you can always correct it with black in a little bit. Um, so once I've got that kind of softened into those edges, I'm gonna start picking up more white on my brush. I didn't pick up any more brown and black at this point. I'm gonna just kind of start utilizing the white to give myself this cratery type of appearance. And this is a really easy um, way to provide dimension on an object such as this, which we we want it to be look like it's kind of round. So the lighter I go in the, the part that would be popping out to the viewer the most will provide it with that optical illusion that it is in fact kind of round. So I'm just gonna, gonna continue to do these circles get it to go a little bit lighter in this area in through here, but I am trying not to over blend these edges or the exterior part, so that way it does give that appearance of kind of like a little craters here and there. And you could certainly make yours more in focus than I'm doing, so if you wanted yours to be a little bit more on the um, close-up type of look to it, you could certainly have darker spots 
and lighter spots, adding more contrast in smaller little areas. That will give it more of a um, up close and personal look at the moon. And then once you've got this done, without washing my brush, what I'm gonna do, I have a dirty brush right now. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to wipe it off on my paper towel and I'm going to, with very little bit of paint on my brush, I'm going to soften my edges. So this is where my moon meets my black. And because I don't have much paint on my brush at all, and possibly some of my black is still wet as well, I'm going right along that edge and I'm kind of overlapping, like half of my brush is on here on the moon and half of it is on the black area. And this is just providing me with a really soft edge, which almost makes it appear to be a little out of focus. And this isn't necessary. This again is just kind of a visual preference for me. It helps me to make it look a little out of focus. And it also helps to, to give the illusion that my, that my circle is in fact circular. So if you had a couple of spots that might, might have gone awry on you, this will definitely help to give the visual effect that it is nice and round. And then you can just kind of keep tweaking it. If you wanted a little more lightness anywhere, just pick up a little bit more white and just kind of keep tweaking it until you feel like you have it in the, um, in the tonal value that you want. And then once you've got that done, we're gonna be switching to our small brush. So you can just put this large brush away take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna be doing for the next step is we're gonna be painting our spider web. So I will be using my small brush and I'm gonna be using black and white paint to do this. I do wanna forewarn you before we start this step that you make sure that your canvas is dry. So this is that time where you get to, you know, take that extra long break if you'd like to. Or you can find some kind of fun fanning method to get it dry or you can do as I did and just whip out your blow dryer and get it dry that way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pre-mix myself a gray color and use that as the web, the main body of the web. So it has a kind of a darker translucent look where it's gonna be lighter in some areas and darker in other areas because we're gonna use a little water with it. And that way it'll make it look like it's just being illuminated by our moonlit sky. So I've already pre-mixed myself a gray color so you can kind of see where I'm headed. Yours doesn't have to be exactly the same color as mine. All I did was I took a little bit of black and a little bit of white, perhaps about equal parts of both, actually a little bit more white than that. So maybe double the white to the black and getting myself just a medium kind of gray color somewhere in that vicinity. And then I'm gonna dip my brush in water and add a tiny bit, couple of drops of water to it. So it's a nice thin consistency. So that way when I go to paint my lines, one, I'll have a lot of fluid on my brush, which means I'll be able to get long continuous lines and it will, the water will also provide me with areas of the paint on the canvas that will have translucency to them. So some areas will be lighter than others because they'll be more see-through and they'll see the black underneath. So I'm gonna give myself some markers cause I'm gonna do like the cross um, straight pieces of the spider web and then we'll do all the little connector pieces in between. So I'm gonna come up my right hand side, bottom right hand side of my canvas about three or four inches. Give myself a little bit of a marker there. On the bottom of my canvas, I'm gonna come over the right hand side, maybe about inch and a half, two inches, somewhere in through here. I'm gonna come over, if this is about halfway, somewhere around here is about halfway, I'm gonna to be to the right of that, maybe about inch and a half. Yours don't have to be exactly the same spot as mine, I'm just kind of spacing them in a carefree kind of manner. The next one I'm gonna do is almost halfway between here and the left-hand side of the bottom of my canvas, somewhere about in through here. Then I'm gonna do one up maybe about an inch, inch and a half up the left-hand side. Then I'm gonna go, if this is about halfway up my canvas, I'm about an inch below, half of an inch to an inch below that for another marker. And then I'm almost halfway between this marker and the top of my canvas for my last marker, or for my last exterior marker. Then I'm gonna make a marker that's gonna kind of be the center point of all of these cross pieces. So 
If you kind of, if you find like the halfway point from left to right, right about here, and I am halfway top to bottom is about here, I'm a little bit lower than my halfway point from top to bottom and I'm about halfway from left to right, give or take, somewhere in through here. This marker is between, directly between these two. So if you were to connect these two in a line, this, it would hit this line. So what I'm gonna do with this marker is that's going to be my starting point of all of these bottom ones and then we'll come back and do a continuous line up top. So I'm loading my brush with that gray paint and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be connecting these pieces. Now I like to have my hand resting on my canvas when I'm doing these long continuous lines so that helps me to prevent me from pushing too hard on the canvas. So if you hear anything rubbing, it's my hand. <laughs> so I'm gonna just keep my eye on the prize. So when I start here, I'm gonna be watching that other line. And these do not have to be totally straight lines. And as they go through the um, your gray moon, you may, you may not be able to see them in some spots simply because they might go on the same exact color gray as um, as you started. And then I'm just gonna kind of go down. And if you miss your mark, don't worry about it. We're working on a black background, so you can completely um, make corrections with, with that later on. So don't feel the pressure of having all of these lines super perfect. So again, just kind of starting in through here and then just kind of working my way through all of these markers, something like this, and then I'm gonna go ahead and do this last one in through here. And of course, you can see I sometimes will go from left to right or right to left. It doesn't have to be the same way each way. And then I'm gonna connect the this marker to this marker in one continual line, and I'm gonna hit that on my way. And again, it doesn't have to be super straight, but I, I'm gonna keep my eye on my prize, which is the other marker. So just kind of going straight through in through here. We need to reload my brush because I ran out of paint. And again, it doesn't have to be super perfect. This is a spider web. I don't think, I think the more imperfect they are, the better. And now that I've got that done, what I'm gonna do is do a whole bunch of connector pieces. So again, I'm using a lot of water on my brush and I'm gonna be doing them in slightly arcing lines from one line to the next. And I'm gonna go really fast so that way it has some a natural kind of element to it. So I'm just gonna kind of go really fast and I really can't see that part in through there. So I just added a touch more black to my brush just so we can definitely have a little illusion of some of the um, the web going in through there. So if there's a big section that you're going through and you're like, mm, I really wish I could see that, then you can certainly go ahead and add um, add a little bit of black or a little bit of white to to the to the equation. And then I'm just really kind of going fast. You might find that you want to go a little bit slower to um, make your lines either more beautiful than mine, but I like mine to have this natural kind of effect to them. So I'm just gonna kind of go ahead and do the next one. And I, I think in, in real life, the spider web parts, these little connector pieces, they are one for one in most parts. So if you have one here, it um, in, in nature probably would connect to the one that comes over into the next area, but I am totally not terribly concerned about that because I'm just making a fun, spooky kind of painting. So if you want yours to be have those super uber realistic elements to it, you can certainly make yours one for one and give it that, that real realistic look to it. And then I'm just gonna continue on as I go through this process, just kind of going really in a fast manner as I go through this middle range, I'm picking up a little bit more black on my brush just so we can see that that section a little bit more. And your your gray may already be light or light enough or dark enough for that section and it you know, we will probably have different color grays that we're working with, which is totally fine. And again, if you make a big line and you're like, oh my God, that was too big, or you know, you want to dull it down at all, you'll be able to do that with a little bit of black. But I'm just rolling with it because I know that there's going to be some light 
from my Moonlight. We're going to be adding some highlights to a lot of these um, a lot of these pieces of the web. So I am just rolling with any big um, marks that I make and I'm just kind of having fun with this process and getting these to all connect in a carefree loose fashion and then once I've got this all done I will be adding some highlights to the um, to the web itself so I'm gonna just kind of get these on here and then we'll work on those little highlights which will be with the um, with the same brush so in a section like this where I feel like I might have gone too light or too wide, I'm just adding some black to my brush and you can just kind of counteract these with a little bit of black. So don't feel like you are, you know, like you don't feel like you have to keep that big line that you just made. If you made it too big, just come back with a little bit of black and that'll that'll dull it down and that'll get it into a more realistic or, you know, subtle subtle range. But when you go to add the, the next thing, just be cautious of what you have on your brush. <laughs> and then I'm going to just kind of go ahead and do this tier in through here. And of course, I am just going from one one of the long lines, one of those long diagonal lines, and just really giving these carefree curved type of lines. And the curves could go the in the direction I'm doing them in, or they could go in the opposite direction. It's all gonna be however that spider built this particular web. So know that there's many different variations and they do not have to all be perfectly symmetrical because I've seen them, you know, building them in between corn stalks and all kinds of weird things. They build them in strange places in my own house and they, are not always symmetrical. So if yours doesn't end up being symmetrical, I wouldn't I wouldn't fret about it. I would just kind of roll with it and let happen what's going to happen without with your own carefree hand. And then once I've got this done, which I feel like I'm 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 closing in on the last couple of markers in through here and again just kind of letting my hand kind of steer myself through this and letting some these lines be more on the carefree kind of side. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm just wiping my brush off on my paper towel and I'm picking up some white paint. I'm going heavier white paint to give myself little twinkle highlights along the edges of my, um, of my spider web. So what I like to do is just kind of skip the line. I skip it along the line, I guess is, is a better way to explain it. And this way I've got some, oh, as if maybe there's little pieces of the silk that are just kind of shimmering in the moonlight. So you can really have a lot of fun with this. I don't make it a solid line. I just kind of skip this along. I'm just using the little tip of my brush. You can do it along all of them. You can be strategic. I'll probably put more towards this area in through here because I feel like that's going to be lit up the most with the um, with the lamp that we're going to be putting in. So don't feel like you have to make this really consistent through the whole thing. I'm really just kind of going down these side pieces first and then I'll go ahead and I will do some um, in those curved pieces as well. But you can tell as I'm as I'm doing this, I'm really not doing the whole thing. I'm just allowing myself to kind of skip along and give myself a, you know, a variety of them. So on these curved lines, I'm gonna do a little bit more in this area in through here. So almost like these little polka dot kind of um, marks that I'm doing along here. So I'm being a little bit more aggressive with the, with the white paint in this area over here. Again, just so it makes it look like this area is gonna be lit up a little bit more than the rest of the web from the um, from the lantern that's gonna be here in a minute. So just kind of getting myself a whole bunch of these little white twinkly marks in through here. And then once I feel like I've got enough, I'm bringing this out pretty far over here because my lantern's gonna be right about here. So I'm allowing there to be a little bit more of that brightness in through here. And again, if you do too much, you can always back it off. And then I'm gonna do a couple of um, additional little twinkle marks throughout these um, webs as they go farther and farther away from that center as if maybe it's just, I don't know, little 
pieces of moisture or the silk or you know something is creating this extra little bit of shine on some of these pieces of the web and then we are going to be using this same brush for the next step so once you've got enough of these little tiny twinkly pieces and again you can see I'm being very inconsistent with this just kind of giving myself little bits of twinkles here and there and then once you've got everything that you want you can uh, wash and dry this small brush in preparation oh actually yeah we're gonna use this brush so small brush wash and dry it in preparation for the next step all right so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna do the background glow for our lantern I'm gonna be using my small brush and I'm gonna be using just yellow paint uh, you do want to make sure that this area in through here is dry so you know you can do that break blow dryer thing if you want to um, I'm gonna be using my yellow is very translucent so I'm using this um, this deep yellow that has very little opacity to it so it's very see-through if your yellow is not see-through then you'll want to add a little bit of either water to it or a liquid medium to make sure that you have some translucency to it I'm gonna have my glow in this area in through here because my lantern is going to be right about here so what I'm doing is I'm taking this yellow and you can use quite a bit of it and I'm just going to be rubbing it out I want to make sure that I can see through it um, so I am rubbing it until I can see through it and I'm not going super far but I'm definitely going into my moon a little bit I'm going down almost to this this line in through here or to that line you can make your your glow area of a different size than mine but this is about as large as I'm doing it and I'm just making sure those edges are really kind of soft so I'm just rubbing it out and letting it dissipate into the um, canvas or into the colors next to it and then once you've got it as far out as you want to go we will be using our chalk for the next step so once you've got this done you can put your small brush away take out your piece of chalk and get ready for the next step all right so what we're going to do for the next step is we're drawing an outline for our spider i'm going to be using my piece of chalk you could certainly use pencil or whatever else works for you so how i'm going to do this is i'm going to draw a series of little shapes and then we'll draw some long spider legs <laughs> and hopefully you'll you'll position it in a way that you want to which is why we're using chalk so you can reposition it at any time so i'm going to have the head of the spider in through here i'm going to draw myself a little circle that's maybe, I don't know, three quarter, half of an inch to three quarters of an inch wide by tall. There's a couple little fangs that come off the front, so I'm just kind of giving myself a couple little fangs. Um, I'm going to do a little midsection for the body. So I'm just going to go from uh, the head back a little bit. And then I'm going to do a big kind of circle type of shape for the main part of the body until I get down to we'll call it like the pointy part of the spider I think this is where the silk part comes out so something like this is how I did it so I just bring it down into a little point there and then just kind of level it off a little bit in there I'm gonna put a couple of legs on this side so really I'm just kind of giving myself markers I want one somewhere in we'll call this the midsection of the spider then I have one coming out in through here so what I found when I was looking at spiders for this um, painting was their legs have like joints in them so kind of like our elbows or our knees so I'm gonna plan for that as I'm doing it and a spider to the best of my knowledge has eight legs so I'm gonna try and make sure that I have eight legs <laughs> so I've got these two here I'm gonna put two on the back side in through here so I'm going a little bit lower than this um, top bump in through here gonna bring it out like that and then maybe I'll come down in um, oops that was a little too high come down in like a little bit of a diagonal type of a line and then I'm gonna do another one coming out in through here and then maybe this is going to have another 
a little bit different of a diagonal kind of line, something like that. And these two legs should be pretty similar to one another. So however, you know, long one is, you just make the other one similarly in length. And if you make a wide chalk line like I did, don't worry, we can erase it with water. <laughs> and then I'm going to put a couple uh, coming off of the the forehead. So I'm going to have one come in, we'll say maybe in through here. And then I'm going to have this one coming down like this and then I've got a little piece coming down like that and then I'll have another one in through here coming over like this and these two again would be simil similar in length. Um, I think this, I, I don't know what's going on with these two but they are they, they, they work. <laughs> they work in the, they were, they were that way when I was looking at them. So I'm not sure if the, I don't think they should be the same length. I think they're good like that. And then I'm going to do two really tall ones up and through here. So I'm going to have this one coming up here. That's the joint. That's the joint up and through there. This one's going to be the one that's holding the, um, the lantern. So I'm going to put a little hook on the end of that one. I'll have another one. This one's probably going to be, you know, behind that one or something. So, but it's going to be similar to this one. So that's the joint there. We'll come over in through here. And then this is going to have this little other part in through here. And that's all I'm going to be doing for the outline of my spider. I'll be using my small brush for the next step. So you can just get ready. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're painting our spider. So I'm using my small brush. I'm gonna be using black, white, blue, and yellow. And how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna paint it with a black base first. So I'm gonna start with my body because I know that I'm gonna want that to be dry when I get to, um, I'm gonna put a little highlight on it. So I am just starting with that so it had by the time I'm done with my other pieces of my body it will have time to dry and you don't necessarily have to go all the way to the um, edge of your chalk mark so if you find you know you're going through this process and you're like oh that chalk was a little bit wide and you don't want to travel all that way for um, your paint just leave it and then let the paint dry and you can come back with a little bit of water and that will, um, you'll be able to erase those that chalk line. So I'm just kind of going right along my chalk line, but if, you know, if I come to a spot, which I might uh, when I get to those legs, come to a spot where I'm like, eh, I don't wanna bring my black out that far, I'll just leave it and then I'll erase it with a little bit of water once my, once my paint has dried. So that's a beautiful part about chalk. Although it does um, kind of bleed into your paint a little bit. So if you get some, some gray spots, don't worry about that. Just kind of roll with it. We're gonna be putting some highlights on anyways. And what I like to do, you guys probably can't really see this too often, but what I'm doing is I like to dip my brush in my, in my water in order to get these nice smooth edges. So I'll, I'll a lot of times, pick up some black paint and then dip it in my water or you can add a little bit of water to your black paint. That's gonna give you like an ink consistency and it'll give you these nice smooth lines to work with. So I did the body. I'm gonna go ahead and do my little head in through here. And again, bring it to the edge of your chalk mark if you want to and if not, you can certainly modify it a little bit. Then I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna do my little fangs in through here. So just pulling out a couple of cute little fangs. I don't know if fangs can be considered cute, but <laughs> we'll call them cute so they're not so scary on this painting. Um, and then I've got this little uh, leg in through here. And when I'm doing my legs, I am thinking that they have those joints in them. So if you have areas where you know, it's like a little bit thicker at that um, that knuckly point where they meet, then that's, that's gonna make it look even more realistic. And then I'm just kind of bringing this out into a more narrow end. I'm gonna go ahead and do this leg in through here. I haven't really decided which leg is gonna be for these back ones. I think this one's gonna be on the other side of the of the spider so I'm gonna just kind of make this in through here and of course you can widen or make these lines thinner whatever is visually appealing to you um, these back legs they could certainly be a, a little bit on the 
wider side, but these, all of these, um, this is a pretty big spider that we're painting, so these legs could certainly be a little bit on the, on the wider side or on the wide, yeah, the larger side. But if you make yours and you're like, oh, that was just too much, you can certainly come back and narrow it with using some of that, um, that background gray or anything else that would help you to make it into the width that you want. And then again, I'm just kind of bringing this down in about the same length. I'm gonna have to clean up my chalk on this one later, which is totally fine. And then again, just reloading my brush to get these legs in through here. I'm gonna have maybe this one with the little point of the, the knuckle part or the joint sitting up a little bit from that other leg so that way we can see the difference bringing this here and again I'm, I have a feeling I'm going to be erasing part of my chalk mark so if you feel the same about yours don't worry about it that's part of the process and again a good thing with the the chalk is that it's really easy to um to just make go away so it's a great tool to use as you're as you're doing your drawing process and getting things in place and then whatever you don't want to utilize you can just magically erase with a little bit of water so i'm going in for these bigger legs up and through here so these are probably going to have a little bit more width to them so i'm just going to push my brush a little bit firmer so i get a little bit more width on those ones and as they meet this head they might all just kind of converge into one spot but we're just going to kind of get them on here and then if there's anything i need to do with them later i certainly will i'm going to bring this one yeah this one's just going to kind of almost close this whole gap in through here and then I'll bring this one out in through here. And I'm going to put little um, highlights and kind of these um, mark making to give myself a little bit more dimension in these legs in a minute. But right now, just starting off with black. This is a great way to, to get them in place. And then we can add all of the other information on top of them. This is going to be this little one here. We're probably going to most of that one's going to be a little hidden behind our lantern but we're just going to make sure that all the parts and pieces are on and then whatever the lantern ends up covering in the end that's going to be totally fine this this one of course is the one that's going to be holding the lantern so again i'm just using black paint at this point just to get these on here gonna give this one a little bit of a hook so it has something to hold the lantern with and then what I'm going to do is I am going to wash and dry my brush so I can start the little highlight process that I'm going to do. Just kind of getting these knuckles or these joints to look like they've got a little bit more substance to them. So I'm going to wash and dry my brush. I'm going to put a highlight on this area in through here as if it's being highlighted by the lantern and by the moon. So I just wiped my brush off. I'm going to pick up a little bit of blue paint. This is going to add an extra like shine to the um, shell or the body of the spider. So when you use blue on top of black, it's going to provide you with a little bit of um, almost like a metallic type of look to it. So I'm going to put that on there and I'm going to let that dry for a minute while I go ahead and put some extra highlights on the rest of the, the spider. So for my highlights, I'm going to be using primarily white, but you could also, if, you, if the white goes too bright for you, you could also use some of your gray that you used for your um, spider web. So wherever your comfort zone is, you could even use a little brown or a little yellow or whatever is speaking to you. I'm gonna, uh, I have, so I have white plus a little bit of gray on my brush right now. And for my highlights, I'm really just gonna do quick little swipes. So I've got this, I'm gonna just kind of give myself a little bit there. I like to do it on the knuckles too, or on these little joints. So that's gonna help to sell the story of it having that three-dimensional aspect to it. And don't forget to, that you can utilize a little bit of water on your brush as well. So that will help you to get these kind of quick little swipes on there. I think this one's going to have a little highlight in through here. I'll put some little highlights on these, on these fangs so we can make it look even 
super scary <laughs> or a little creepy in through there. Maybe I can even put a couple of little eyeballs in through there. But the eyeballs, that's gonna be that's gonna be your judgment call. <laughs> they might they might put it too much into the creep factor or the scary factor for you. I'm gonna put a little highlight on the back of the body. So a little little highlight in through here, a little highlight on the back of the head, somewhere in through here. And again, these little touches that I'm doing are really just helping to provide that um, that dimensional element to it. I just picked up a little bit more black so that doesn't go too too bold on me. I might add a little bit of yellow or something in a minute just to uh, get it to look a little more round or whatever. So I just picked up a little bit more white, gonna put a little swipe down here, maybe a little um, thing at the knuckle, gonna do the same thing over here. So right now I'm just kind of, my light source, my dominant light source is gonna be from the lantern. So that's the side that I'm putting these highlights on for the legs in through here. So I'm gonna have this leg on top. So I'm gonna have that one like that. I'll put a little marker in through here. These other legs are gonna be behind it, but let me just give it that swipe in through there. We've got a little swipe in through here. And again, add a little water onto your brush to give yourself that um, fluidity to create these marks. And again, I will be erasing some of my chalk marks with my water in a minute, but right now just getting my my legs on here with a little bit of white. Gonna give this guy, this one in through here. This one's gonna get a lot of light because it's actually the one who's holding the, the lamp. So we'll give it that a good amount. And then I'm gonna, um, I have a little bit of white on my brush. This is gonna be that extra highlight on the back. So I've got white. So I'm putting this bright, bright highlight on here. And if your highlight on your back is the same color as your moon, if your moon was really light in this area, you can certainly either darken your moon or you can change this highlight. You can make it, I'm gonna actually put a little bit of yellow in mine in a second, but I'm getting it to blend into my blue first just to kind of get it to have that extra bit of highlight. Now I'm adding a touch of yellow to my brush as if maybe the glow from the, um, the lantern is brightening it up. And you can certainly make this brighter or darker, whatever is speaking to you. The blue and the yellow will probably make a little bit of green. And if you want, you can always, if you're, the back of your um, spider is still wet from the black and if you're having difficulty getting this um, highlight on here, you can always just let it dry for a minute and come back and just keep elevating that highlight. I think I'm gonna put a little highlight underneath here as well, just underneath that belly, just to tell a little story there. And then you just sit and fiddle and make any little adjustments that you want. If you you know, want the legs to come into the head more, feel free to, to give that illusion by just pulling that leg, pulling a little highlight in through there. So you just kind of make whatever little adjustments that you want. And then we're gonna be use, utilizing this small brush for the next step. So once you've got your spider all nice and created, and of course you can utilize a little bit of water. I'm gonna just demonstrate how to get rid of the chalk marks. So I'm just putting a little bit of water on my brush and the water will magically make all those little chalk marks disappear. So if you have any that you need to take care of, feel free to do that. And then you can just wash and dry this small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're painting our lantern. So I'm gonna be using my small brush and I'm just using black paint. So you can make your lantern into whatever you'd like it to be. I'm just gonna go for a generic kind of rectangle type of shape, little wrought iron design in the middle, which might just be an X, <laughs> but you can certainly make yours whatever way you want. I Clearly I'm gonna have it hanging from this claw or this leg in through here and I'm gonna have it coming down I would say maybe somewhere in this vicinity I'm just gonna kind of do a horizontal line that's maybe about an inch wide and then I'm gonna come down maybe about an inch inch and a half make another horizontal line that's maybe about the same width but of course you could make yours wider or 
small or whatever works for you. Then I'm just going to connect these two. I'm going to just dip it in a little bit like that and then try and give myself something similar on the other side and decorate this whatever way you want. Again, it's a lantern that's being carried by a spider, so <laughs> you can really use your own imagination in making this into whatever type of lantern that you would like. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of put uh, a little decorative design in the middle of it. So I think I'm just going to go for a generic little X from corner to corner. Most of this is going to be hidden when I go to do the um, the light in the middle, but this will just give me some sort of um, background type of um, design work to go for. And then I just need a um, some kind of handle type of thing. So I'm going to have it coming from here on this side of the claw, the left side of the claw, and then just kind of dipping down and maybe maybe coming out like that. And again, decorate it whatever way you want to. I know from side to side, I usually don't make them even, so I'm gonna give this a concerted effort here. So I'm gonna bring this up like that and then just kind of come down in a little bit of an arcing line. And then we are gonna be utilizing this same brush for the next step. So once you've got your lantern shape on here, you can wash and dry this small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna put the light inside our lantern. So I'm gonna be using my small brush. I'm gonna be using a white and yellow paint. And if for some reason I need to go into another color, I will do so. So I'm gonna start with just yellow paint. And I do recommend that you make sure your black lantern part is dry at this point. Um, so that way you're not running through any wet paint. The yellow, again, is gonna be translucent. And my light is starting in here. And I know that my yellow is translucent. So I'm gonna see that black underneath it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull it out in these beams of light from the center of my, of my lamp. So you can bring yours out as far as you want. You can have them as bright as you want. I will be utilizing white in a little bit um, to get that center brighter as well as um, lighten up some of these beams. But right now I'm just kind of pulling them out, letting them dissipate. You can pull them out further than that initial glow, which was this kind of rubbed in area that we did earlier but I like to just kind of pull them out in a carefree manner and I'm pulling them from the center because that's where the nucleus of my light is and you can pull them right over your black. You can leave little spots of the black without it on top. So wherever, again, your comfort zone is and whatever you know your yellow is providing for you, you just roll with it, whichever is looking or feeling good for your painterly eye. And again, I'm just utilizing my yellow right now and I'm bringing this really pretty high above my um, spider leg itself. And of course, you go with it as, as far as you want. You can see how when it is translucent like this, it is illuminating the lighter parts on those spider legs. So that gives it a really cool effect. And again, bring it as far as you want. It will turn darker, a little bit darker as it dries. So because it's on this dark background, so you might come back and feel like you want to add more. And as you're running out of paint, that's a great time to just pull it out even further. And that's going to give you these long, really dissipated types of um, effects farther out. So you can certainly, as you're running out of paint, just take that brush and pull it and just rub it as far as you want. And then what I'm gonna do is, without washing my brush, because I um, got most of that yellow off, I'm gonna start putting the, the bright light on the inside. So what I'm gonna really do is just kind of tap this white paint right on the inside. I'm gonna leave a little bit of that black showing, so I'm kind of tapping it around the little bars of the lantern. And if I get it in, you know, if I bump into it, that's, that's fine, that would totally, happen and then I'm going to wipe my brush off on my paper towel 
pick up a tiny bit of yellow paint and get this white to just kind of um, go into the yellow glow. So I'm just kind of tapping them together so they blend a little bit, but not so much so that the all the white turns yellow on me. And now that I have that real light, bright nucleus in there, that super brightness, I'm gonna, without washing my brush, pick up a little bit more yellow and I can bring a kind of a, a lighter version of that yellow because now I have a little bit of white on my brush out partially into those existing beams that I already have. So the brightest part is clearly gonna be in the center of this light, but you also, the, the sprays or the beams of light will be a little bit brighter as they are closer to that nucleus as well. So I just kind of keep adding these little layers of yellow as they're close to my center spot of my, of my light until I feel like I've got that, that brightness as much as I want to. And if you feel you need to add any of your black back, I just picked up a tiny bit of black so you could see how this would work. If I wanted to bring back some of those bars on the sides, if I felt like I put too much on there, I just give it this little hint of the, the black in through there so that way you can see the light but it hasn't um, totally taken over the appearance of the of the um, of the lantern itself and then I just kind of keep playing with it so you can feel free to keep working on your light as much as you want to and then we are going to be using this small brush for the next step so once you've got this done and if you need to go back into that center and make it even brighter feel free to do so and then you can wash and dry this small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I usually sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right corner. I'm going with my small brush. I think I'm gonna go with the gray paint um, so we can see it on top of black. I usually do black, but I need to be able to see it. So I'm gonna do it with gray paint. I do my initials. You could certainly do your first name or the date or a symbol or whatever you'd like for your identifying mark to be is totally fine. And that is gonna conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a creepy, but a little fun <laughs> spider character. And I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.